This is Jack Dennett inviting you to Maple Leaf Hockey Talks. Every year around mid-October, the fans converge on Maple Leaf Gardens, and the roar of the crowd is one of the most exciting sounds in Canada. Imagine now the year 1951, the date November 27th. High in the gondola above the ice in Maple Leaf Gardens, Foster Hewitt describes the play-by-play. -play. We're at the halfway mark in the second period. The score is tied 2-2, and the Canadians appear to be weakening. So far, Armstrong has been a standout, and he seems to be all set to make his mark in the NHL. All ready for the faceoff. Brentley gets the draw, circles back to the blue line, swings over the left side. Here's the pass. Armstrong moves fast on the right side. He takes the pass on his skates. He moves in over the blue line. He's around Bouchard. He's right in on McNeil. He shoots, he scores! Fifteen years ago, a young hockey player scored his first goal in the National Hockey League. George Armstrong beat the Montreal Canadiens 3-2 to two with that goal, and it was a thrill he'll never forget. I was playing uh, on right wing with Max Bentley, who is now in the Hockey Hall of Fame. He gave me a pass at center ice, and uh, I happened to be going at a pretty good clip at that time. I went around Butch Bouchard playing defense for Montreal and went in and shot a low one into the corner with Jerry McNeil. I did a little war dance that night, and I think everybody in Maple Leaf Gardens was pretty happy about it as well. For George Armstrong, it was a dream come true, playing in the NHL. Maple Leaf Gardens was a long way from the place of his birth, Bolins Bay in northern Ontario. I was born in Bowling's Bay, July 6, 1930, which is 36 years ago. Uh, we moved to Falkwich when I was about uh, one year old, and I began to play hockey at 11. That, that was my first organized hockey team, which I played on. At the team's annual banquet that year, George met one of his idols, Sil Epps, then captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I was captain of the, the, man, the Bantam hockey team, which I played for that year. We had won the district championship. So presented the cup to me, and uh, as fate may have it, I came to the Maple Leafs, wore number 10, and became captain of the Maple Leafs. But that was a great thrill that night for me. Even though he was scouted by the Boston Bruins, young George played a waiting game. He was convinced that someday the Leafs would come after him. I had always been a Leaf fan when I was a youngster, and I was very confident of my playing ability at that time, and I thought perhaps that the Maple Leafs would come along and offer me a contract. As as it did happen, they did come. They did offer me the contract. I signed. I was sent to Stratford my first year in the OHA. Was lucky enough to win the scoring championship and the Most Valuable Player Award. Uh, then I spent two years with Toronto Marlboro Juniors. At the conclusion of the final year with Marlboro Juniors, I played for the Marlboro Seniors. We went on to play against Calgary in the Allen Cup Finals and were lucky enough to beat them then also. In 1950, George played a full season with Pittsburgh in the American League. And midway through the following season, he came up to the Leafs to stay. Armstrong really made a great move there, going down the right wing and taking that pass just like a veteran. It was a great scoring play, and he looks as if he's going to be here for quite a long time, the way he handled that puck. And now Max Bentley is fishing that puck out of the net and handing it to him as a real souvenir. There were many thrills to follow. Four 20-goal seasons, three Stanley Cup winners, and recognition that comes to a chosen few in hockey, being named team captain in 1957. Well, being named team captain was a great thrill to me also, but uh, I think the, the most important thing with being captain is to set a good example for the rest of the players on the team, not necessarily by scoring the, the top number of goals on a team, but by crying as hard as you can at all times. Another honor came Armstrong's way back in his amateur days when an Indian tribe in Alberta named him Chief Shoot the Puck. We uh, had a day off uh, during our Allen Cup Finals in Calgary. Uh, the management of the hockey team decided to take us to Banff. Halfway there, there is a stony tribe of Indians. The Indian people at that tribe were very proud, I suppose, that, that I was Indian and I was one of the better hockey players with the Allen Cup team. They made me an honorary Chief Shoot the Puck of their tribe, and uh, I've carried the name Chief ever since that. On December 19, 1964, Chief Armstrong reached another milestone on the ice. All ready for the face-off. 
Keon gets the draw. The big M moves in on the left wing. He's in the corner. Armstrong is in front of the net. Here's the pass. He shoots. He scores! Armstrong was in the right place at the right time. He made no mistake. That's Armstrong's 200th goal. Quite a milestone in hockey. I was very happy to score my 200th goal in the National Hockey League. When I began playing, I didn't expect to, to score that many, nor to play as long as I did. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the three stars for tonight's game. The first star, George Armstrong. The second star is Davey Keon. The first star, George Armstrong. That announcement has been heard countless times on Hockey Night in Canada. Team captain, team leader, and a tremendous team representative on and off the ice, George Armstrong, one of the finest of the Leafs. Mm -hmm.